Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today we celebrate the Feast of Candles, known as Candles. It recalls the day when Jesus was presented in the temple after Mary's 40 days of purification were complete. The candles which we light this day are a small reminder of Christ, the greater light. He is the light which at the beginning of creation shined in the darkness. And he is the light which no darkness can ever overcome. Let us pray. God, our Father, source of all light, today you reveal to the aged Simeon and to the prophetess Anna, your beloved Son, the light which enlightens the nations, and the Redeemer of Israel. Bless now these candles as we kindle them. We ask that you fill our hearts with the light of faith, that we who bear the candles may walk in the path of goodness and come to the, the light that shines forever. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, your only begotten Son was presented by Mary and Joseph this day in the temple. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, may our hearts be made clean so that we may be presented to you as your own children. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you speak, will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of truth and life. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, 
so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. The word of truth and life. Thank you. Son and of the Holy 
on Sunday when I asked folks what the church celebrated on February 2nd, I didn't get a, a big response on what it was that the church normally does celebrate on this day. Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. It is the feast of the groundhog. Hallelujah. <laughs> I understand Pakistani Phil actually saw his shadow, so that maybe that means that spring, that spring will soon be on its way. I, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I threatened to go kill him. Because he lived not too far from where we lived, and I thought I might just go get rid of that rat. So uh, I did. I refrained. Today's celebration is not a prominent feast of the church, but it is still an important one. One that preempts the normal lectionary readings when it falls on a Sunday. So we put away the readings that are normally assigned and we focus on this Sunday. This feast goes by at least three different names, and then if you interpreted it into Spanish, it would be even more. But it, it is known by, as the Purification of Mary, it is known as the Feast of the Presentation, and it is known as Candles. Now the reason for this is that Luke's Gospel reports two different Jewish observances happening at the same time. First, Mary comes to fulfill the law as prescribed in the Torah. In ancient Judaism, women who had given birth were considered ritually unclean. They were permitted to be with their family and around others, but they were forbidden to att attend worship in the temple for 40 days. So Luke records the day when Mary comes to the temple after her time of purification is complete. So we assume that Mary and Joseph have made this six-mile journey from Bethlehem to Jerusalem so that Mary can now be fulfilled and return back into the worshiping community there in Jerusalem. We should not overlook the sacrifice that was made on as part of this purification ritual. Luke says that there were two turtle doves given. This was the offering of the poorest of poor. Two common birds was what they were able to give. Gives us a window into this holy family. They were not rich. They were Second, Luke tells us that Mary and Joseph also took this opportunity to fulfill a second commandment. They came to present Jesus, their firstborn son, and to uh, dedicate him as God had commanded. In Exodus 13, God said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, God says, whether human or animal. We sing a song called First Gifts. Imagine that when we are singing this song, we are talking about the firstborn of each family is to be given to God, to dedicate it to God, to live into God's service. If you were a male, you were permitted then to serve in the temple if you were a Levite. So every person in every household was, I mean every person in every household was then a minister seen as a minister of God. The Israelite people were to consecrate everything. Perhaps you might remember the story of Hannah. Who remembers the story of Hannah and Samuel? Anybody remember him? Samuel from your Sunday school? Okay. You'll probably remember it when I go to describe. If you re recall, Hannah dedicated her firstborn son Samuel to God. And Samuel, we are told, lived in the temple with the priests. And if you remember, God called to Samuel one night while Samuel was a little boy. 
And remember, Samuel went to Eli, the priest, and he said, was it you that called? And Eli said, no, go back and sleep. And God called a second time. And Eli, did you call me? No, go back to sleep. And the third time, Samuel heard God call his name. And Eli told Samuel to respond, saying, here I am. Now do you remember the story? We sing about it regularly. Here I am, Lord. Luke intertwines these two Jewish customs, the purification of a new mother and the dedication of Jesus, the firstborn of the Holy Family, and he turns these two stories into an epiphany. What does that mean? Epiphany, the word means revealing. A manifestation of God's glory. Luke includes in this account the testimony of Simeon and Anna regarding the baby Jesus. We are told that Simeon was a righteous man that believed God had promised that he would not die until he himself had seen the promised Messiah. Simeon had waited a long time. He had gone to the temple daily looking for this new son. He had grown old and weary. But seeing Jesus, Simeon recognized something special with Jesus. Luke tells us that Simeon took the babe in his arms and proclaimed that Jesus was the light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of God's people, Israel. Jesus was the light to the Gentiles. Jesus was the light to us. We are those Gentiles. Simeon rejoiced because his weary spirit could now find rest and reassurance. He could die trusting in God's goodness, that God's salvation had come to all people. Historians tell us that these two feasts, the purification of Mary and the Feast of the Presentation have been celebrated in the church since around 381 AD. So about 1,700 years the church has celebrated these two feasts. And then given the proclamation that Simeon made regarding Jesus being the light to the Gentiles, well, it only seems natural that within a few years the additional practice of blessing candles the tradition that we now call Candlemas would be included in the celebration. Now, two different commentaries that I consulted uh, regarding today's gospel lesson, one written by John Oliver and the other by Jamie Vidal, both claim that we should not overlook the fact that this story, as wonderful and as heartwarming as it is, is more than a word of peace and consolation. Because you see, there in the midst of that text, Luke's story includes a warning. Simeon said, this light comes for the rise and fall of many in Israel. Vidal points out that there is an old Spanish saying that goes something like this. It is one thing to call for the lion, and quite another thing to see him coming. In other words, it's one thing to await the desire of the promised one. But there's going to be some upheaval and turmoil when he does. Why? Why would that be? Well, you see, light is a trouble. Luke states it that light reveals the inner thoughts of many a heart. It will illumine even the darkest corners. It will expose and uncover what is hidden. It will demand that we walk with integrity. This Holy One who enters the temple comes not 
in power and great might, just as the Jews thought, but rather comes in the form of a helpless babe. So Jesus become, comes to us as a conundrum, a contradiction, if you will, a stumbling block to many. It is true this babe that he would that it is true this babe that will reveal the hidden motives. The motives that are common to all of us. It will reveal what's inside the heart of those who call upon him with their lips. And those who shove him away, or those who crucify him or reject him and his action, with their actions. Perhaps a troubling thing about today's gospel lesson is that it reminds us that we can't, we can't enjoy the light and warmth of Christ, which we would love to do, we want to do, without also welcoming the purification that it brings. All things, ourselves included, must undergo some sort of transformation. That's what it means to be a Christian. To always seek to be transformed, to always seek to for renewal. It's not a once and done thing. It's an ongoing, continuous thing that we must do. We must allow the light to do its work in us and within our own community. Sisters and brothers, through the Spirit, Simeon and Hannah were each given the gift to recognize and to make known the truth regarding the Holy One of Israel. My question is, are we able to recognize that same light? Are we able to rejoice that the light has come to be fulfilled? Not only in the people long ago, but fulfilled within us now. The light comes within us now. Are we willing to embrace that light and let it do its work, not only in our world, but within our own spirits? Does our spirit rejoice over the one who comes to set things right? This morning, each of you were given a candle to take home. And if you didn't get a candle, we'll get you a candle before you leave. I hope you allow this candle, these candles to serve as a reminder. Let me remind you of your own call to reflect, reflect the light of God in our world. Let it also serve as a reminder of the purifying work that the light has come to do. May these candles be a genuine token of our willingness to allow the light of God to dwell and shine within each of us. Let us stand and reaffirm the faith that has been handed down to us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God of God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Diados come up above us, kneeling as we are able. Let us pray for the Church and all the world. With all our heart and with all our body, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Señor, ten piedad, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Por nuestro obispo, y por todos los clérigos y laicos, oremos al Señor. Señor, ten piedad. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Por esta ciudad de Tulsa, Por todas las ciudades y comunidades, y por los que viven en ellas, oremos al Señor. Señor, ten piedad. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Por los ancianos e inválidos, por los viudos y huérfanos, por los enfermos, y los que yacen en el lecho del dolor, especialmente... Bill, John, Kelly, Don, Joyce, George, Arlene, and Susan. Oremos al Señor. Señor, ten piedad. For children and the young, and for Zachary, Michael, Jose, and Alfred, and those celebrating their birthdays, and for Steve, Colleen, and Gary Cornett, who are celebrating their anniversaries we come, and the anniversaries we commemorate, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Por los pobres y oprimidos, por los desempleados e indigentes, por los encarcelados y cautivos, y por todos los que se acuerdan y cuidan de ellos, oremos al Señor. Señor, en piedad. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, Marty Kimball, Maria Mendoza Pavan, Ruben Peoples, Helen Begley, <coughs> Mary Ellen Perkins, Dale Hosley, and Victor Darnell Jones. And those in grief and distress, Loretta Parks and family, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Por la liberación de todo peligro, violencia, opresión y degradación, oremos al Señor. Señor, ten piedad. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. En la comunión de San Jerónimo y de todos los santos, encondémonos los unos a los otros y toda nuestra vida a Cristo nuestro Dios. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin. Confessimonos nuestros pecados y los pecados de nuestra sociedad and in mal uso de la creación de Dios. O God, our Maker, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have no pleased to choose the years of creation. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not belonged to their faith. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. We have heard the good news of Christ. But it failed to share with others. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. O oh God, be merciful to us and give us our sins. Dios omnipotente, tenga misericordia de ustedes. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
My sisters and brothers, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ. I'm wondering if anybody knows what this little gadget is. It was broken, but it's not now. <laughs> cross candles, very good. Why do we have cross candles? Besides, it looks like we So I, so I was cleaning out the sacristy a while back, and I noticed that we had one of these things. And I went, oh, okay. So we we've been more Catholic than we are now. Okay, so. This candles, cross candles, are used in, during the Feast of St. Blaise. That feast takes place tomorrow. St. Blaise was known as the patron saint, known as the patron saint for throats and other illnesses. Tradition has that he was a physician. And so on his feast day, which is February 3rd, uh, the faithful are invited to receive a blessing with crossed candles uh, around her throat, and uh, so it's a, it, it's a blessing for healing. So we will offer that immediately after Mass in the chapel.
And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 